Hello everyone and welcome back to Pluto Direct in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. And in this video I've added back in Kerbalism and we're checking out the situation in the SPH first before moving back to the mission. And it looks like I'm gonna have to probably disable the radiation factoring because if you take a look I've got uh, as much shielding as I can put on anything. So we've maxed out shielding on everything. And there seems to be, normally maxing out means 20 millimeters. We're at 19.85. I have no idea what part is missing shielding. But anyway, it's close enough to maximum. And it's saying that as far as interplanetary, you can see there, the duration is 2 years and 289 days, which is only enough for a Mars mission. So uh, we wouldn't be able to do any mission beyond Mars with the radiation... Uh, levels that they've set for Kerbalism with the Realism Overhaul configuration for Kerbalism, which is sad. <laughs> Basically, they're saying, no matter what, your Kerbals will never survive the radiation beyond Mars. I can't deal with that. So, I'm going to have to figure out how to get into the configuration files to mess around with those to make that situation better. Uh, maybe, but I mean, the problem is the interplanetary amount is sort of all-encompassing. It's not like directional from the sun. That's like solar storms. That's only we only have a seven-hour uh, ability to survive that. So that's not good. Uh, it's all pretty bad looking. So I don't know what other radiation shielding we can have on this. If there's some other mitigating factor I'm missing, but it's pretty bad. And the food, water, not oxygen situation is different from what TAC Life Support was saying. Me, TAC Life Support was somehow messed up in this install. So I'm just going to have to accept that. But what it says here now is that we have 20 years of food. Well, I don't know how many people it's counting for. I guess it's however many are in there right now. Well, that's not many, huh? Um, that's only six people. So if we actually like fill it up. Well, that's not good. Because <laughs> um, we have 16 there. Hmm. Back life support messed me up. Um, it looks... Well, now it's... Oh, that's water. That's different. Uh, we have a water recycler, so the water is not a problem. Uh, yeah, I don't know if all the Kerbals are going to survive like this. I don't know. Okay, maybe it was only meant for 6. Uh, not 16. It's been a while since I built the mission. I built it during a stream, so my recollection is a bit fuzzy, and... Took me a few months to get back to it. At least we seem to have a lot of lithium hydroxide. But uh, I wonder why we're carrying 11 years worth of water when we have recyclers on. Or is it counting recyclers? I don't know. It's, uh, it might be because of the produced. Hmm. Okay, so that's... Uh, it's all a bunch of problems. Like, for instance, the habitat is probably going to be a problem too. It doesn't really say there, but here's stress. The maximum stress duration is only three years. It seems like they configured the realism overall uh, configuration for Kerbalism to suit only Mars missions. Because I don't know how much more we can get from it beyond three years. Uh, maybe we can have some f firm ground? I don't think we can have, no. Uh, plants? I guess we could have plants, but that'll add 10% to an already 90% factor, so... It's not going to bump up the duration that much. We've got lots of volume per capita. The ideal living space is 20 meter cubed. We have 122 meters cubed with 6. So, yeah. So we can't just add more living space and expect that to compensate for and give us more duration. Okay, well anyway, let me see what I can tweak to help them survive at least for the mission that we've already launched. And then we'll work out how to fix things back uh, for the next time we launch, because we will redo all this uh, based on what we learned from this Pluto mission and try to do things better next time. But for now, let's see what other problems we encounter. And so I'll diminish the radiation, diminish the stress, and even maybe cut back on how much food, water, and oxygen they consume temporarily so that we can at least get on with the mission and then we can reassess after it. It looks like the mission should have only had six people. Okay, so here we are with the mission. I've done all I can with the RCS on this stage. 
So we're going to let go of it and check that everything else is going to be all right. Okay. Scroll down. Separation. That gave us a little bit of an impulse uh, towards the direction we still need to do a correction in. Right now our situation is like this around Jupiter. Uh, 1.5 million kilometers away and we need to be about 800,000 kilometers away. That plot should get us a Pluto encounter right there. However many years that is. And uh, I've upped the, well, I've upped everything by a factor of 10, basically. So now we have plenty of margin. Uh, I don't know why in upping it by a factor of 10 in the, well, no, that, hmm. <laughs> why does it only see six people? Didn't we have 16? <laughs> I'm so confused. Uh, we, we did have 16, right? Not just six. Everything's sort of messed up. So uh, maybe I didn't have to up it by a factor of 10 on the food, water, and oxygen at least, and the lithium hydroxide. So I did a factor of 10 in the configurations, but I thought we had 16 people on this mission and we only have six. I'm pretty sure we didn't only have six. Things have changed. <laughs> um, so apparently deleting TAC life support and introducing Kerbalism can do all sorts of things like change what Kerbals are on a mission. Who knew? Uh, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm totally lost. Uh, I actually had to add back in the shielding, by the way. Uh, it had zero shielding, so I had to go into the persistent file and add back the shielding that we were supposed to have, which I, I believe we've got back to the levels we had before. But yeah, everything is sort of confusing when you change mods like this, it seems. But the upshot of all this is this is what we've got and they won't fry from the radiation right now and they won't go crazy from the habitat so that's good anyway all we have here really is ion engines and the reason for that is we needed storable fuels right and that's about as efficient as you can get so yeah i mean of course i could have used ksb interstellar stuff but that would make much less of a challenge. So I'm going to continue using the ion engines here at their remarkable thrust. I guess we do have drop tanks. These are drop tanks, but they're drop tanks of water. So we're not going to get to drop them anytime soon, especially since we do have water recyclers, but it's missing wastewater. Well, Eventually, we'll get wastewater, maybe. Hopefully, Kerbalism produces that properly. Okay, so if I time warp... Uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's supposed to work during time warp, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. Let's see, do we still have uh, Xenon gas flow when I time warp? No, actually it's replenishing somehow. It's, uh, if there's a negative flow, that means it's replenishing. So we're not using that properly. Hmm. Okay, well, I have something else to fix, and that is our ion engines, making sure that they work during time warp. Let me figure out what's up with that. These are the same ones that I used, I think, on my uh, YouTube Mars colonization series, so they worked there, they should work here. Let me check. Okay, well I've gone through quite an ordeal and it's still not working. As you can see I've time warped, but the throttle is up here, but when I time warp it's not doing anything, the xenon gas isn't getting consumed. I updated KSP Interstellar, which is what handles the using ion engines during time warp, I changed which engine it was, I had to fix which fuel it was using because it suddenly started using hydrogen instead of, well, actually oxygen gas instead of xenon gas for some reason uh, to fix that in the configuration. And 
Yeah, well, it's uh, it works outside of time warp, but as soon as I do time warp, it's not working. So it's not working the way it did in my Mars colonization series is basically it. I thought I had tested it in this version, so I'm a little bit miffed by it. <laughs> um, let's bring up the KSP Interstellar Windows. So right now there's supply. I mean, we've got plenty of supply. We've got a nuclear reactor here. Well, here it's actually drawing the power. That's interesting. It's reading the continued demand for the energy from the reactor. And we'll just focus on that. We've got plenty of heat dissipation. Uh, that's not a problem. So yeah, if I shut the engines down, then of course this six ion unit for Mars demand goes to zero. Otherwise... It goes up, but then when I time warp, it's not working. So there's some sort of bug. I don't know what the bug is. It might not be KSP Interstellar. It might be just a conflict between mods. Okay, we've got an encounter there. Uh, 35.2 meters per second is what we need. How quickly do our reaction wheels turn this? That's another thing that we need to assess. It's not very fast. Okay, I think we've turned enough for now. Let me get it into interplanetary space and who knows, maybe it works there. So off we go. Okay, well, let's try it in interplanetary space. Maybe the restriction was only in Earth space? I don't know. Uh, definitely does not seem to be consuming xenon gas properly. It keeps the engine thralled up though, which is interesting, and again, it uh, uses the power. It's like something else is interfering with it. So I'm gonna take a look at Kerbalism and see if it might be doing something to interfere with KSV Interstellar. So that'll take a restart. And we can still see Earth back there, but we are in interplanetary space. And at least we'll get to Jupiter, but I'm going to try and figure out how we might be able to get to Pluto after all. So, still working on it. Let me try something else. Okay, well, I attempted to add persistent thrust to the install. That is managed by the same modder who manages KSP Interstellar Extended, Freethinker. And I managed to put uh, persistent thrust on here. As well as, uh, I tried it with just persistent thrust, that didn't work. I tried it with persistent thrust and the KSP Interstellar module that I was using to try and get thrust during time warp. And, well, anyway, uh, it's weird because we see the throttle is up, we see the flames going out, but it's not providing any thrust. Uh, we see the power consumption. We see it say it's providing thrust, <laughs> but the xenon gas is not being consumed. So it's not providing any thrust. So I am left with only one option at this point, and that is to increase the thrust so I don't have to time warp during the burn, right? I mean... Uh, what what else can I do? Now, it so happens that our reactor on here pr produces 84 megawatts somehow. I didn't set that. I didn't create the reactor. It's KSP Interstellar doing the numbers there. It's a molten salt reactor. And um, so we we can up the ion engine power by a factor of 100. I'm obviously not upping the mass of the ion engines, so... It's just to compensate for the fact that we can't time warp while using them. It's not reflective of what kind of thrust they would actually get. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, back out of the save once again. I'll have to restart the game, but I'll increase it by a factor of 100. And hopefully that'll give us at least a fighting chance here. Okay, so throttle up. And we see lots of consumption of xenon gas, a hundred times consumption we had before. 
and a whopping 7 kilonewtons for each one of the thrusters. And it's using most of our reactor supply now. So uh, that's what we can get. We can't get much more than that unless I up the power from the reactor as well. So yeah, uh, KSB Interstellar does the calculation for how much thrust we can get from the engine. We can maximize, well, we might as well just stick to what we have here. Yep, so it's all a matter of how much power you feed the engines. The only thing it doesn't calculate is the mass of the engines, that's independent. So uh, why don't we do this burn closer to the node in 251 days? Uh, I should probably time warp in the tracking station because it's going to give me this producer of electric charge has incoherent behavior problem otherwise. And we'll meet up with it in about eight months. Okay, um, well, as far as our resources go, I actually don't know exactly where they ought to be, but it doesn't look right. But then we knew it wasn't going to look right because that's all messed up because something between TAC Life Support and Kerbalism. I mostly blame TAC Life Support for that. Um, yeah, I will fix all the things before we launch this again. And I'm leaning towards creating a blender model of the Monument Launcher. Same masses, same capabilities, same everything, just fewer parts. And I'll think about that, though it might be fun launching it with full lag once again. Who knows? But things will definitely change and we're gonna make improvements. I'm pondering the use of a uh, nuclear thermal stage in place of the three M1 engines, for instance. So we might go that way. That'll provide more efficiency and allow us to carry a heavier load here, which will save us some trouble. And I'll try and figure out the ion engine situation properly. We'll see about that. So anyway, I'm going to physical time warp and why don't we just throttle up right now. It'll still take a little bit of time maybe. I don't know. I don't think these can help us steer. No, I guess it might not take as long as I thought. Let me take a look at the map here. It's such a delicate situation that even here it's just a matter of 0.8 meters per second. So I'm going to give it time to turn to the node here as it will need that time. Unprecedented ion power. Oop. Okay, there's an encounter. We'll get as close as we can on the pre-Jupiter bit. Okay, and then we'll have to correct that after Jupiter, I think. It's a little bit hard to predict it otherwise. So, let's meet up with Jupiter. It's a dot right now. Okay, perhaps now we'll be all right to time warp by Jupiter. So yeah, I'll be resetting the food, water, and oxygen stuff and the radiation I'm just basically turning off. Uh, we'll have shielding on though. I think that's fair. 6% stress. That's actually more than we need at this juncture. Well, it's been two years. I guess it'll be all right. 6% stress. Well, why is Valentine at 0% stress? And Jeb is the only one at 6% stress. Everybody else is at zero. I don't know. Okay, well, we are approaching our periapsis around Jupiter here. So this is about as good a view as we're going to get. As we pass by, Saturn's over there. Uh, not a whole lot of stars. Um, just an object enhancement is... Oh, uh, we're crossing Jupiter radiation belt. I didn't completely turn off radiation, I just weakened it to a uh, significant extent, so Jeb's got 1%, everybody's got 1% now. Yeah, I just weakened it, so the radiation stuff is still going on. I think the skybox needs a boost. I'm missing the stars here. I mean, I know... I mean, the sun's there. I think it's still dimming the skybox way too much. Anyway, 
Well, there goes Jupiter. We are now on our way out and on to Pluto. We are on to Pluto now, right? It looks like it. Okay, so I'll plot the mid-course adjustment for that and make sure we get nice and close to Pluto. Okay, here we go for the mid-course adjustment. Just 3.9 meters per second and that will bring us pretty darn close to Pluto. Ah, I'm doing a little bit early, but that's not going to be too bad. And so once we get to Pluto, assuming this correction goes exactly as planned, we will be 1,665 kilometers away from the surface. Well, actually from the center. And we are going to, or is, well, anyway, uh, I think that's from the surface. But we are going to need 8,900 meters per second in order to make orbit. And we do not have that. Now, will we manage to have more by dumping a whole bunch of food, water, oxygen, and anything else we can dump? I don't know. We can try that. We've got ship manifest here. We can try it. So we will see. Maybe we actually have a chance to make orbit. Not that this is going to be a mission I keep here. We're going to revert back to the Voyager transfer window. I zipped up the save at that point. And we are going to make fixes, improve our mission. And eliminate the dubious things that we've had to do to get this far. Oh, is this the best Pluto texture we can get these days? Well, the nice thing about having ion engines is you can certainly fine-tune things. Well, getting closer doesn't help too much. 8,600 we need. Now, if we were to try to get to Neptune or Uranus or Saturn or anything like that, those wouldn't be quite as bad as Pluto because they have a lot of gravity and they can help out a little bit more than Pluto can as far as capturing into orbit. Our problem is that Pluto can't help that much, so it's a special challenge in this case. Though Jupiter's radiation is serious, huh? Even with all the radiation stuff turned down, it uh, tried to bake our 6% radiation they have. And that's mostly because of the pass at, Pluto, uh, at Jupiter, I think. Jebediah is super stressed. Nobody else has any stress except for Jeb. I don't even understand. I I'm gonna like reinstall everything, I swear. I'm gonna just reinstall everything and uh, we'll take it from scratch and we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Hopefully it'll work out better. I'll start a new save even. You know what? I won't unzip the save at Voyager Transfer Window. I'll start a new save and time warp to the Voyager Transfer Window all over again. And we'll do it that way. Well, even with our current thrust, how much time is it going to take to... 20 hours. Okay, well, the thing is, I can't do that. <laughs> so, even if we... Even if we could muster the Delta V by dumping food, water, and oxygen, uh, in order to do that at 4x time warp, because that's the best we can do with the ion engines on, that would take five hours real time. I've done ridiculous things before, like doing the Apollo mission in real time. Is that? No, that's something else, I guess. But I, I am not doing that here this time, so... Yeah. We will see whether we could have done it, but I am not going to do a five hour burn. Oh, oh, oh. There it is, I think. Yeah, now we can see it. Right there. And we've got Sharon, I guess. It's got other moons, but not as big. Okay, so let's say 
more food, water, and oxygen had been consumed, as might be done if I hadn't changed the numbers. I changed the sound on ship manifest, but I'm not too sure. Maybe I should just eliminate the sound altogether, but then you need some sort of notification sound that you're draining resources. Okay, yeah, I mean, it looks like we could get enough Delta V without even getting to halfway on the food, water, and oxygen. Yep, okay. Alright, so that's that at least is sort of satisfactory. There's also lithium hydroxide we could dump. That's heavy. Uh, but we need everything working properly, so this is a nice start, but not what I was looking for. So I've got a lot of work to do, and that'll take me some time, but I will endeavor to fix everything so that we can approach Pluto with a clearer conscience, I guess you could say. So anyway, with this start, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.